We've been in a race against the clock and the weather. We need to get our concrete floor poured before winter, but before we can do that, we have to have our underfloor plumbing roughed in. Will we beat the weather? And will we become plumbers overnight? No! <laughs> Hi there, I'm Patrick. And I'm Lorana. Welcome to Hole in the Ground. This is the beginning of our journey to build our Earthship home. Which we affectionately call a hobbit hole. In beautiful Idaho. There are some peculiar things about the plumbing system for this home, so let's review. First of all, our potable water source will be from rainwater collection, which will be stored in a cistern behind the house and run through the earth bank to the water organization module, which earth shippers call the WOM. Here, water will be filtered, pressurized, and heated, depending on where it is headed in the house. Next, water will run from the WOM to the kitchen sink, the dishwasher, the washing machine, and the bathroom sinks and showers in our two bathrooms. Okay, now here is where it gets complicated. Used water from the kitchen sink and the dishwasher will run straight out to septic. We just immediately classify it as black water. However, water from the bathroom sinks and showers and from the washing machine has the option of being run to the planter at the front of the house as gray water. Pipes from these three items run up to these two valves at the front of the house, which we can switch to have the gray water run to the planter or just run straight out to black water. Then, after the gray water runs through the planter, it will be pumped back up to the toilets and the two bathrooms, where it will be used one final time to flush the toilets before being run out to septic. We spent a couple of weeks trying to figure out the plumbing ourselves, trying to figure out what sizes of pipes and fittings we would need. But you may remember from our story about the black water pipe in our last video that we are mm, totally clueless about plumbing. We spent hours poring over Idaho plumbing code, but we found it hard to find answers to our specific questions about this very unique project. Nevertheless, we spent time making attempts and digging some trenches for pipes so that they could have the right amount of slope. Remember those PVC sleeves we put underneath the concrete footings like way at the beginning of the summer? Well, first of all, our plumber said that Patrick measured the slope of them perfectly. So, they worked great for getting the potable water lines under the footing. But when it came to the gray water, we had a problem. First of all, not all the lines we needed to run would fit through our 6-inch sleeve. Worse than that though, the elevation of the sleeve was low enough that the feed pipe for the planter would have been at the very bottom of the planter, and that clearly wasn't going to work. We stressed about this for weeks, but thankfully our plumber helped us figure out a solution, which was to notch out the top of our footing and run our gray water pipes over that, which allowed it to run into the planter at a higher elevation. We'll still need a pump to get the used gray water back over to the bathrooms where it can be used to flush the toilets. It's beautiful. Never have I thought that some ABS and some PEX would be so beautiful. But we have our plumbing in, which is very exciting. Um, we, because reasons, we ended up hiring a uh, plumbing contractor to help us out. And I think that was smart because we won't really have access to this once the floor is poured. And if we screwed it up, then we'd have issues. Um, so, give you kind of a layout. So bathroom, uh, we'll have a two by six wall going through here. Um, and the bathroom will go from basically there to there. On this side, along the back, is our water organization module. Um, that's where all the uh, pecs and stuff is coming in. That's where it'll all be fed to the house. Um, also the water heater will go in there and that's just a little drain for the overflow drain basically for the water heater. Um, here uh, will be our laundry um, and we've got two pipes for drain one goes to let's see one goes to black water the other goes to gray water um, and i'll talk more about the gray water system soon that's the drain for the toilet and gray water drain for 
the uh, shower bath, I'm pretty sure. And we'll, you know, get that all tied into there. Uh, same with the laboratory. Here's bathroom number two. Uh, in the kind of greenhouse area um, off the side. Over here we'll have tub shower kind of thing. Um, and whatever drain stuff there. Toilet. Laboratory. And the various feeds. Um, to the bathroom. Got a few different PEX pipes here. Um, one of them is a gray water feed to the toilet bowl um, because gray water from our planter will be used to feed the toilet bowl um, or the toilet tank I guess. Uh, another one is for a little hose bit I guess that we'll have um, at the front of the house here. It's just half inch but I mean we're just gonna have like a rainwater cistern so you know, we don't really want to be too egregious with our water usage if we need to, you know, pull water from uh, the front of the house via a hose. One of these will be hot, one of these will be cold. These are larger. They are, how big are they? Three quarter, one inch, something like that. I think three quarter. Anyways, I believe these are three quarter, one hot, one cold. Um, they'll get teed off uh, to feed both the <clears throat> shower as well as the laboratory sink. There's a decent amount of gray water magic going on here. Um, we had to notch out uh, kind of the top of this footing. Don't worry, we got the okay from the engineers um, because we wanted our gray water to r run as high as possible so that it could actually feed properly into the planter. And same thing here, um, our gray water lines are very high, kind of going along there you can see and going along there and they basically join together are brought over to here so the gray water lines come together into here and um here are so and at this point we've got two valves uh one drains back to this side um, if we close off one side and open up the other. This will just drain back into black water and uh, exit the house. Um, if we close the, and there's also check valves, that's what these doodads are, are over. Um, if we close black water, open up gray water, then water from the fixtures and stuff that are being drained into gray water will come over here, pour out of here into our planter, which we haven't built yet, but we will. Um, basically going to be a mini footing uh, from here, kind of like this, uh, inverted T-shaped just over here. Um, and it'll be a two foot wide uh, planter, about two foot deep, and going between 50 and 60 feet down that way. Um, and we got the okay from the county to kind of do this little modification to put that extra footing in, which is exciting. Um, and yeah, so to be able to, you know, retain access to these valves and stuff. Um, our planter is going to start basically right here, but we'll just have essentially a box cut out um, that, you know, we can cover up and stuff like that, but where we won't pour our floor into um, so that we can, you know, open it up, access these valves and make adjustments. So we've got a whole bunch of poly lines coming along here into the kitchen area kitchen there's no gray water or anything happening so that was pretty straightforward um, this is where the kitchen sink will be just draining going under here under the sleeve that I buried uh, before all the concrete work happened um, and then it kind of goes under the footing and then out that way and as very excited the uh, the plumber said the sleeve that I buried was perfect basically <laughs> um, which is nice because I spent a lot of time trying to make sure it was, you know, at the right elevation, you know, quarter inch of uh, uh, elevation drop per foot of distance um, and kind of getting it lined up so that the math mathed to be able to line it up all there. And it did work, which was really nice. Um, here we've got, I believe it is soft, hot, soft, cold, and hard, cold is what these three are for. Um, code requires that we have a... a uh, uh, lines for soft water 
Um, so that is what that is for. Over here, uh, this is where our fridge is going to go, and this is um, water feeding, soft water feeding uh, the fridge for ice and for water and stuff like that. But yeah, very, very exciting. Oh, in case you're wondering, the planter is going to basically go to about this area. So from here to there, it'll be a nice wide planter. We'll be able to plant lots of yummy fruits and vegetables and grapes and things. Um, but anyways, that is our plumbing update. Super exciting. Um, yeah, the plumbers basically got it all bashed out in a day. Um, I took the day off to help them out, which was fun. And I learned a lot and um, it just uh, <laughs> cemented the wisdom, I guess, in hiring a plumbing contractor that actually knows what they're doing versus us, you know, screwing it up ourselves. So, yeah. With plumbing roughed in, we could finish the final steps for getting our floor poured. We'll tell you in the next video all about the dirt work and final prep for our concrete floor.